housing market. We're going to get a whole host of different housing indicators. Yeah. The Fed characterized this as a market that was slowing down. Do you agree? No. I don't. Uh, this is one place where I, I see a lot of divergence, and I think that's been part of the market narrative, that the housing market would slow down in the second half of the year, and that would necessarily bring uh, the, the CPI numbers down because of shelter costs being such a big part of the CPI. But if you look at housing from a long-term perspective, and I have been doing so for a very long time, uh, you'll see that the, the supply shortages we're seeing in housing are structural. They are long lasting. They didn't start with the pandemic. They've gotten worse during the pandemic. The labor shortages are intense. We see it in our own data at ADP. Uh, there is a lot going on with housing that are, is not cyclical. Even though we look at it as a cyclical indicator, it has structural holes right now. And I think that what's underappreciated is the fact that, one, the U.S. is chronically undersupplied, especially with affordable housing. And two, there's been a lot of new households formed over the last two years. In fact, we're at a run rate of a million more households being formed than were, was the case before the pandemic. I remember coming on and talking to you about millennials living in their parents' basements. Well, they've gotten out of the basement. <laughs> They are ready. They are 40 years old now. It's time <laughs> they, to move They better get out, out of the basement. And so you're seeing an increase in household formation that is going to put pressure on demand. Um, millennials are reaching peak home buying years. And rental prices, I think, are going to kind of hold trend, uh, not decelerate in a meaningful way for inflation.